Like I could be home and be getting that without coming to Mobile at work for 10 grand. Why is Nay always driving? Why are you always driving Nay? If the only thing you talk to your partner about is your kids or whatever, then something wrong. To answer that, I don't talk about my fears. I do not give life to my fears. I don't talk about them none at all. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about myself in this get to know me video that's been a long time coming because from what I kill Philip Met telling us that I go do one, but today's the day. I'm finally getting it done today. Today's the day. Whether you're a new subscriber or a long time viewer, I hope you enjoy getting to know a little bit more about the person behind the screen. Moi. So grab a snack get comfy and let's dive right into it when i go waste no more time i'm just gonna give it to you as is i have a few questions here from instagram and tiktok but mainly instagram and a few from my dms as well i didn't get any from you guys on youtube so clearly i don't know everything i need to know about me already so here we are i'm gonna answer the ones from ig first Let me search for the ones from IG. And I kind of made some pointers for a few because I'm going to check enough sometimes. I like to say I don't like to talk, but yet still I do like to talk sometimes. So I'm just going to, I made some pointers. I'm just going to keep them nearby. So I'm going to go off words. So the first question is, where in Jamaica are you from? So for those who don't know, I am from... St. Elizabeth and I am currently living in Montego Bay. This is where I have my house. So God's willing, I don't have any plans to go back to St. Elizabeth or anytime soon. So this is now home. I've been living in Mobe for the past 12, 12? Yeah, for the past 12 years, I've been living here in Mobe. So basically second home. But you know, St. will always have my heart. How much is it for a bag juice in your area? Girl, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I love me some bag juice though. However, the last time I bought a bag juice, I didn't just buy one. I bought the entire bag and that has about like 12. The bag contains like 12, I think 12. And I don't remember how much I paid for it. So to be honest, I don't know how much it is for a bag juice in my ear. I don't even know if they sell bag juice here. I had to go by this corner shop out the road. So I don't know if they sell bag juice here, here where I live, but I know for a fact they sell it somewhere out the road. So the next question is, why is Nay always driving? Why are you always driving Nay? Oops, she can't answer that because guess what? She's not here. What? <laughs> Fun and jokes aside though, I, Tashana, I don't like to drive, but stick her next 10 pins. I recently learned to drive like in 2020, 2020 what? We're in 2024. So it would be, I started the year before 2023. So I started in 2022 and I did, I got my license last year. Yes! <laughs> Pass in the seat for me! <laughs> Pass the thing. Pass the thing. Get to know. Pass in the seat for me! Pass in the seat for me! That is it! Come on, <laughs> so it's a full year now, and guess what? I haven't, I haven't used it. I haven't used it. It's, a, it's not really sad for me to say, because I could care less about it, but... I only did it because I was peer pressured into getting it because my turn proper old woman I never have any license and I was peer pressured I got a car before I even had a license and don't ask me if I ever drive a car to like drive drive so the car was a motivation for me to get my license and I still I wasn't motivated because I hate driving I don't like nothing about driving I wish I never ever 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 in this lifetime have to drive like there's just this level of anxiety i get when i think of me having to go on the stair the farthest i've ever had to go 
and I wasn't by myself was to Westgate and back. So that's that's good enough for me. If I never ever have to do that again in this lifetime, I'm fine. So yeah, that answers the question. That's why Nia is always driving because I I refuse to. And every day she asks me, say, come no man. But no. Nope. And another thing. What's the other thing? I don't remember what's the other thing I was about to say. That's the thing where I have to do pointers. Like I'm a chat no. I'm a like straight from the point. Because here I was about to mention something of great importance and no, I totally I forgot. The place hot me! Is that the sun get closer? So the other question is How do you balance parenting and relationships? This is kind of a serious question. Hmm. How do I balance parenting and relationships? First of all, first of all, um, my partner and I never really had a chance to, like, be by ourselves for too long before kids came along. So yes, in that try, of course, in realizing you find the goodest girl of all. So in that try, you know, say so yeah. Don't pay me no mind. But big and serious thing, we never really had that much of a time alone before we had kids because we started talking in 2012, and then Jake one came along in 2013 so yes i can do the maths do the maths if you're not good at math and you'll see what i'm talking about so we never waste no time or he never wasted any time at all because truth be told i never wanted kids i always see myself as this free-spirited person i just wanted to be me i never wanted any responsibility i never wanted any serious relationships either but here i am many years later i just never wanted to have this emotional connection with anyone other than like my parents you know aunties uncle sisters that's it i just wanted that and that alone so i never wanted to be emotionally responsible for anyone emotionally connected to anyone i didn't want any parental responsibilities because what we just feel like we need to here there and everywhere without a care in the world but god said no and God gave me two beautiful kids. And even though I wasn't prepared the first time around, I had more so, you know, expected Jada at the time she came along. So we kind of literally got to know each other along the way while, you know, a child is involved. So, you know, once a child comes into play, once a child is involved, you don't get to. All right, so when Jake one came along, um you know we were still new to this parenting thing we we're both first time parents so we never know anything about what we're do. so we decided to just wing it i could have when i gave birth the, the opportunity was there for me to go back home to send it to just you know spend the first few weeks there with my child so you know mommy can teach me the ropes and everything but then you know he said no let's just wing it together and that's what we did so Jake one is going to be 11 this October. So almost 11 years now we've been winging it and it's just really us. So when it comes on to the parenting side and relationship side, and when I say relationships, I'm also going to include my friends as well because they play a big part in my life. Well, the few that's in my life. Um, so where balance is concerned, he doesn't go up much. I am more of the free-spirited person and... I am more outgoing and that's what one of that's one of the things I like. You know, he doesn't try to change who I am. He more so embraces the person I am and tries to work with me and then I in return work with him. So there's not much of a strain there, but what we do, we are full-time parents. So we are both hands-on, even though I don't post a lot of things about him. So sometimes people always think I'm a single parent because they don't see the father being involved. But that's my choice not to post certain things. I am public and out there, but at the same time, I'm very private. So with that said, going back to the question at hand, how do we balance? So since we're full-time parents and we don't have any... Um, I don't leave my kids with like neighbors and stuff like that and we don't have any family around and i don't leave my kids with friends either not saying there's an issue there but it's just what i choose to do because i don't like to be a bother to people even though i'm not a bother i i just feel like you know i don't like to ask people favors if i don't have to so that's just me 
when the kids go for holidays we use the opportunity to just try to spend as much time with each other as possible go out in that time and otherwise from that we just do things as a family together in the house probably watch a movie sometimes play games whatever it is we just try to incorporate that we go out on weekends together so we just have to use our hand on fashion if that makes sense we go out on weekends together we eat out together sometimes or whatever i'm doing on the weekends if i'm not going out with my friends it's always with them then you know before you go to bed sometimes as simple as that may seem try to talk to your partner it may not be anything drastic or anything long but just try to talk and also what's important to know when to stop talking about the kids know when to stop talking about the kids the kids are important yes but at the same time don't let your partner feel neglected or it's just always about the kids if the only thing you talk to your partner about is your kids or whatever then something wrong make time for him or her yeah it's not always about the kids so we have to really keep that in mind and then yeah my love talk and gesticulate so my hand is always gonna be there then with my friendships no um where my friendship relationships are concerned i go out a whole lot with my friends probably more than i do with my partner but um i go out a whole lot with my friends we do things together we go away sometimes to celebrate each other's birthdays and that's something i look forward to and i love because i am big on birthdays and i think if someone goes all out for me it's just fair i return the favor so i do make time for them otherwise i may not go to their houses I don't really visit my friends probably if that makes me a bad friend in that regard then i am a bad friend i am the phone friend and the going out friend but when it comes to leaving my house to go to someone else's house that's next to not happening it, it may happen i'm not saying never i have done so one and two times in the past probably like one one time but that's something i probably need to look into but in ending and in essence with regards to that question you just have to be intentional intentional about the time you spend with your partner and also the time you spend with your kids because your kids relationship are also very important as well as young as your child is and even as old as your child may be trust me time spent with them is very very important and very very crucial so even though they may not say it you know just be intentional intentional about it and also be intentional about your partner as well it's a lot especially if you work and you get tired and to fulfill those other duties yes you know it, it, it gets a lot so again be intentional set aside time for your kids and set aside time for your partner i hope that helps the next question is I am a mom to a two-year-old boy. Any tips on the motherhood journey? All right, so this is where I wrote down my <clears throat> this is where I wrote down my tips because as in some chat enough. One is practice patience. Um, yeah, parenting can be a challenge, and there's no manual, no um, no perfect question on Google as to how to be a um. A proper parent how to be the best parent there's not there's no such thing as that so as much as Google is filled with all these nice blogs all these nice paragraphs suggestions and everything there's nothing that can prepare you for motherhood really especially in difficult moments it may be easier said than done but take a deep breath take a step back um, just walk away from the situation you know once a child is safe and it's nothing that they're in danger walk away from the situation then you think about it and you go back and deal with it try not to do anything out of anger as well because nothing good ever comes from that space so try to just um be patient so try to exercise as much patience as possible again for someone like me very impatient very easily angered i try to just take a deep breath or walk away from this or walk away from the situation try to just watch something to just take my mind off of it and then once i'm calm i'll deal with whatever the issue is once it's nothing pressing i'll deal with it afterwards because i'm sure when my mind is clearer 
I get a better result um, that I would get if I were upset or anything along those lines. And kids are kids. Sometimes we tend to forget what it's like to be a child and we kind of deal with them a certain way or expect them to think the way we're thinking because what well, we're more mature now. So our mind is at a different level. So we kind of forget what it's like to be a child and how we used to react in certain situations. So try to just empathize with your child as well. Put yourself in their shoe because kids go through it sometimes as simple as it sounds or as silly as it sounds. They go through things sometimes. So just try to be empathetic and put yourself in their position. And I think this is probably one of the most important thing I've done as a parent. I encourage open communication. Like communication is key. We are here this for a long time. From the devil, what's up, why we are here this? Communication is key. So encourage your kids to be open with you. And I have a very open policy here in my household. I encourage them to speak their minds, whatever it is, however they can express themselves. I encourage them to speak their minds. Like, I'm not going to say anything bad about it. Or I'm not going to punish you in that moment. Just tell me what's on your mind and however best you can express yourself. I encourage them to just express themselves because when you do that, your kids won't be afraid to come to you with anything at all. So sometimes it's not something that we're fond of or something that we're pleased with and we can't really bash them in the moment. We have to just allow them to express themselves because that's what we ask of them. So if they're given what we ask and you're going to bash them, then there's no way they're going to want to come back to you with anything. So you just have to be open, hear what they have to say and go about it the best way possible without you know hurting their feelings or their self-esteem stuff like that because they're very fragile these kids nowadays are not built like us not built like us they're very fragile and i don't know if it's the way in which they're being grown because kids nowadays are going with a lot more affection that than we did i can speak for myself whenever i get in love with them is something here so i don't know if that makes a difference in how they react how they behave or how they handle things but they are really soft kids like they're not built like us none at all and another key thing too i always tell my friends who are parents or i always share with people be the parent to your child or your children that you would have want your parents to be to you again be the parent to your child or children that you would want or you would have wanted your parents or parents to be to you. So if growing up you had an issue with how your parents did something and you come back and you're doing the same thing to your kids, then that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. That's crazy. Me a chatter, me a chatter, me a chat. But eventually when you think about it, if you do something that you didn't like, it, it makes no sense because your child is then going to go and probably continue the cycle or perhaps change it. But be the change. Be the change. So if you wanted something done as a child that you think your child would appreciate, then do just that. Be just that. Lead by example. Kids live what they learn. Like my kids, they talk to me the way I talk. They talk to me the way I talk to them. And that's how they conduct themselves in society as well. Like they talk how I talk to them and they mimic my behavior. Sometimes I'll hear them talking to each other and be saying certain things like that. So you have to be very careful what you do. And again, lead by example, try to make it a loving household as much as possible. Try to ensure that the environment your child is in is one that's filled with love, filled with joy and everything like that. I'm not saying there's a perfect household, there's not. But if you can try to avoid arguing in front of your kids or fighting in front of your kids, try to do that as much as possible. Like, try to just be the best version of yourself for your kids and in turn, the best version of yourself for you too because you are going to benefit from it. Love on your kids. Don't be afraid to love, 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 love on your kids. If I want thing, my kids cannot say, oh, they never get enough love. They weren't loved properly. They didn't, um, they don't know how to love because they didn't see it growing up. We don't know about that. 
they won't get the opportunity to say those stuff i openly display love to them and i try not to show one more affection than the other you know boys will be boys they don't want certain things be done to them like a whole pda and everything like that you know you have to know when to love on your boys and when i say love on your boys please don't take it out of context because i know you have some people like that but you have to know when to love on them because again when you have your kids you have to study them study your kids to know what works for what sorry study your kids to know what works for who because you will find that one child likes this the other child likes that so you just have to know how to adjust and adapt accordingly but love on them can't go wrong with that i hope that was enough come and me a chat again i don't have my little pointers them to keep me in line i still went overboard next question but it, it did say get to know me, but you know, some people ask some questions that I, I just couldn't resist answering, even though it's not really getting to know me. But yeah, I, this one says, I need to learn to do makeup. Help with a bag of peas. Can't find my foundation tone. So what I would recommend you to do is to go in Fontana or one of those beauty stores that sells... Um, the makeup brands that you're interested in trying out go to one of those stores and have them use the testers on you that's what i did the first time around when i needed to find my correct shade and even then we still have an issue sometimes because our faces kind of change tones from time to time if you're exposed to the sun or if you're not doing a skincare routine you find that your face may be this shade and then another time it's another shade and then for me my face is darker than my neck my face is darker than my neck, so I have to be blending properly at times to really get that shade. But Fontana, I know for sure, they do that. They match you with your foundation, so you can try them. When you get your foundation, um, the proper one, you can either buy it there or you can try to buy it online. So try that option or you have some websites that you can actually use the camera on your phone to take a photo or a video and then they'll match you with the correct shade that they carry so that's another option for you to try too hope that helps i think that's i think that's it for the for some of the instagram the 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 option i had up there for the questions um i'm gonna go now into some other personal ones what's your full name my full name is Tashana Salmon. Birthplace. I was I was birthed in the parish of St. Elizabeth, Black River General Hospital. A public or general. I don't remember, but Black River Hospital. Do I have any tattoos and how many piercings do I have? I don't have any tattoos. I am I'm never a fan of tattoos. Although I've been thinking about getting one in my old age. I don't know yet. I may get one. I may not. I don't know. Piercings. I have. Currently, I don't have my tongue ring in, but I do have a tongue piercing. So that's two. Hold on. One, two, three, four. Hold on. <laughs> one. Eight, 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 sixteen. Put on the six carry one. Put on fifty six. So I have eight piercings in total, and then occasionally i have a nose piercing that would be nine but i don't have it in right now but yes i may go back to re-pierce it soon because i literally get a nose piercing every other year i don't know what's wrong with me from 2012 till now i've been doing this thing wrong clearly because i know it can't catch do i smoke no i don't smoke i i've tried it i've tried it and i've never tried cigarettes i i I don't know what people get from cigarettes but i i've tried it before and it's just not for me i think i look silly doing it it's just not i'm not bashing anyone that smokes but to me it's just not ladylike for me for me so yes I, I just don't feel like myself and i hate doing things where i don't feel like myself if i feel forced or something like that i, I just don't think it's for me and if I forgot hide and do it, that me just not think it's for me. Cause I don't think I could ever muster up the courage to be like puffing in front of me. <laughs> but I look stupid. I mean I lie, but I look silly. What kind of work do you do? Currently I do not work. I do not like hard labor. 
I'm joking. But I, I really and truly don't have a nine to five. But from time to time, when I'm in the mood, and I should not be basing this off a of mood, I was very overwhelmed the other day <clears throat> trying to work on this YouTube channel, trying to work on my TikTok, and I had stopped doing I normally sell fashion accessories, handbags, cosmetics, and stuff like that on IG. So check out J Loren on IG. I normally do that. So I've recently relaunched on or reopened, I should say, on Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. I've recently relaunched. So I'm gonna see how that, you know, how it goes again and try to just structure my thing accordingly. Ensure I create content way out in advance for that. Try to answer my DMs in a timely manner because that's very important. And that's what I was struggling with, the answering of the DMs. Um, so that's a little side hustle, but really and truly, I don't have a nine to five. I haven't worked since um, I gave birth to Jada. So, you know, and funny enough, this might sound a way, but I've never really wanted to work. I've never really envisioned myself as a person who wants to have this nine to five job or this corporate job or this, this job, that job. I've never been that person. I always wanted to be a woman. That's really and truly all I ever wanted. But just not like, that's just not me. I, I don't mind making a home. I don't mind looking after my kids. I don't mind cooking and I come under making a home and doing the things I need to do for my partner who makes it possible for me not having to work. I've never had an issue with that. The longest relationship would be the relationship I'm currently in. Um, so yeah, and I mentioned before, early on when we started, so yes, that would be my longest relationship. Um, hmm. Hmm. My nickname, um, most people call me Tash No, but back then my name used to, my people used to call me Shauna. And if I hear someone calls me Shauna No, I know it's someone from primary school or high school. But when I started college, everyone started to call me Tash. We didn't even tell them to call me Tash, but they just started to call me Tash. And I have adapted and coming to Mobe, still the same. Everyone just says Tash. But going to primary school as well, let me say Shana Banana. No, I never liked the name Shana Banana, but of course, you know me, Nago McDaniel said so me never like it. So even though they used to tease me and say, um, Shana Banana, Fly Around the Corner, Sierra Green Lizard and Licking Pani Nana, I would sing along with them too because me, <laughs> me, if you make you know something I like it, crazy. Because if I express that, you know, so they're not gonna stop calling me Shana Banana. So after a while, it just phased out because they realized I'm not give a rat's ass about it. I didn't care. I wouldn't cry or anything. So that was that for that. What's something you've changed your mind about recently? I think that would be marriage. My thoughts and views on marriage. I think that has changed. So, yeah. What makes you feel most alive? What makes me feel most alive? my family and when i'm in the kitchen there may be others of course when i spend time with my friends duh but yes those things spending time with my family nothing beats that um when i'm in the kitchen up to yesterday i was feeling down and out and i decided to just put on some clothes go supermarket get some of the stuff i want to cook a particular meal after i was through couldn't talk to me. I was happy, good again, and up and running. But being in the kitchen really and truly makes me happy. And to cook and see others enjoy what I cook, that makes me, did I say happy or makes me feel alive? But yes, when I do that, I come alive. And spending time with my friends, just talking absolute trash, doing things we love, you know, being on the edge, having fun. I love that love 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 so those things makes me come alive how do you deal with uncertainty or stress i don't deal with it i do not but a joke how do i deal with uncertainty and stress when i like stress and i'm not really stressed often or stuff like that but 
my thing is i just handle it as it comes so if it should come i try to think how i can fix it or if it can't be fixed i do what's next what's the most important lesson i've learned this year no the last year let's say what's the most important lesson you've learned the last year the most important lesson i've learned is to take people for who they are when people show you who they are don't question it don't even think sometimes they say give people a second chance but sometimes you really and truly just have to take them for who they are when they show you who they are so don't try to see the better in people at times sometimes they just come back with a bite in the rear but when people show you who they are the first time around believe them believe them when they show you who they are the first time myself i believe them because you often try to give people the benefits of the doubt sometimes or oh you know they'll change or oh they're not like this oh they're having a bad day no when people show you who they are the first time around take that take that and run with it take that and run with it the next question is what are your biggest fears to answer that i don't talk about my fears i do not give life to my fears i don't talk about them none at all i don't even like to think about them but you know we know that's kind of impossible sometimes but i don't want to give life to them i don't want to breathe any life into it i don't want to give any energy to it i don't want to even say it out loud because we know how it go there's power in the tongue Although Mr. Mo wants a million dollars a morning, I not get it, but you know what I mean. There's power in the tongue, so I try not to give life to my fears. I don't speak on my fears. I leave them where they are, and I hope they remain where they are, but I don't talk about my fears. What's something you've always wanted to learn to do, but haven't yet? As simple as this is, I've always wanted to learn to ride a bicycle, and I just can't. No matter how much I try, it's like it just not happen. It's it just not happening. Because I see these cute little bikes, especially up by Half Moon. I might say that with a cute, really go and just enjoy one of them time here. And I can't. I just can't ride it. But I've always envisioned myself on, on one of those bikes. And I hope. <laughs> I hope one day I can at least get to do that. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? The best piece of advice I've ever received is, and I still live, live by it today, if it's thy will, it will be done. So, and that's how I can approach most things in life. I just say, if it's thy will, it will be done. So if this is meant to happen, if this is meant to be, then it will be. If it's not meant to be, then it's not going to be. So whenever I'm doing anything or I'm feeling flustered or overwhelmed and I know I have stuff to do, or you know something is supposed to happen and i'm stressed about it i kind of tell myself if it's to be it will be if it's thy will it will be done so if it's not in god's plan then it's not gonna get done so that's that for that what's a belief you hold with which many people disagree and this is something i don't debate um but <laughs> i believe heaven and hell is here on earth there's no such thing as a magical place that we're gonna just rise up and go or there's a hell beneath the earth we're just gonna go descend um so but heaven and hell is what we're living in it's on this earth it's what we experience from day to day so some people are living their heavenly lives and it's something probably i need to expound on but not right now and again a lot of people disagree with me but i just think it's a state of mind and it's right here with us it's nowhere we're just gonna magically go to after we die or when god comes for his earth whenever judgment day is i just think heaven is right here hell is right here how did you and Nay became such good friends how Nay and i need to tell that story one day but um (laughs) 
she was introduced to me to um i don't know if you guys know i don't know if you guys know about this whole world ventures thing she was kind of selling that to me and that's how we got to start talking that's how we started talking and then you know one thing led to another and another and another and another and here we are but that's an interesting story that Nia and I really need to tell because Nia saved me one time you know there was this one time I overdosed on brownies and what do you call it again the edibles the, the weed edibles I overdosed on that wickedly one time like me never know myself let me tell you say I'm paranoid Massive things with I'm hallucinating. We weren't half as close as we are now. And when I tell you, she stood by she she was there by my side. She showered me and put, got me dressed that night and everything, put me to bed. What tell us say? Like not that when someone does something for you, you should be indebted to them for life or you need to owe them gratitude for life once you express gratitude the first time around i think you know that's it nobody not indebted to you nobody not really owe you nothing once you express your gratitude after the act is done or whatever is given to you i don't think people need to stay loyal to you because of that one thing or two things i don't i don't believe in that but then you know we have a moral compass to tell us how you should really act in scenarios and situations like those but when I tell you, just because of what she did for me, it's like, you know, I try to be, me met miserable and go on bad more while upon her, but me tell her say, not everyone would have done what she did. Your face looks familiar. What school did you attend? Well, I didn't specify, but I attended Epping Forest all day school back then. And then I went on to Black River High. And after that, I went to Bethlehem Oribian College. Well, it was, I think it got changed before I even went there. It used to be Bethlehem Teachers College. But, um, yeah. Evan Forest Primary, Black River High, and then Bethlehem Oribian College. Why did you move to Montego Bay? That's the last question I'm going to answer for today. Some of them I've, I've omitted because they're a bit too personal. Um... Why did I move to Montego Bay? I moved to Mobay in 2011. Because at the time when I just left college, and I'll insert some pictures while I go along with this storyline. I just left college in 2011. Did uh, <clears throat> vital service and everything. You know, feeling pumped and everything. So I said, all right, let me send out some applications. Sent out a few applications and not even one call. Not one digga 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 call. So I said, all right. What's going on here? And in that time, in 2011, the, you know, teachers were here, there, and everywhere. So it's not like teachers were in demand at the time, but no. Had it been no, but I get a job right away. Right away. Because we know what I'm going to know. But anyways, that's another story for another day. But I left college in 2011, sent out my applications, and I get no car. And then... I saw an ad, I bought the gleaner. Cause you know me, I buy a gleaner for see the, the vacancies and stuff like that. I saw a job fair being held in my bay. So I said, all right, you know, let me go on to this. Cause I never really had any real, ex real work experience to my name. I only did NYS, probably two summers I did NYS. God bless them. Cause a girl didn't need a little money. Did NYS about two summers. So never had any other work experience to my name and i was 22 when i left college so i said all right let me try this and see if i can get a little experience to go on my resume what makes sense in a sense and see how it works i never really wanted to leave my baker you know me they have my little partner at the time i sent it i i was okay but i knew from then that my life back then is not what i wanted for myself so even though I was enjoying life as is, I know that I wanted more from life. And, you know, there was just more to life. But life was okay in that moment, at that point in time. And that's another thing sometimes. Don't, you know, you have to really set goals.
goals for yourself sometimes and live by it and i never wanted it to be a case wherein i had kids even though i never wanted kids at that time i didn't want it to be a case where oh i got kids for the person i didn't really see myself with for the rest of my life or i had any major attachments to anyone i really didn't see in my life for too long so was in my relationship of course and i came to Mobe and did the job fair and at the time i stayed with a friend in darlistan so for her to accompany me to Mobe, i never know nothing about traveling like that on my own so stayed with my friend in darlistan she followed me and then saying this and saying that the job fair take about i can't even remember how long right now exactly but i was there from around 7 7 30 and i did not get through from that job fair until about 6 30 to almost 7 o'clock in the night i'm gonna turn the line i'm gonna exaggerate the lines were so long i got there so early and i got a space at the roundabout if you know the roundabout in a free port you know what i'm talking about i did not leave there until way in the night my extra seven o'clock there about i didn't leave until seven o'clock but may i tell her so i'm gonna see like i said no i just may really come and stand up in her wow so i called my person back then i'm like the line long i'm tired almost 12 o'clock when i get through come and just see one here say come back here yeah that's all i wanted to hear and he's like you know go on hold out and see what's what three o'clock home is still not get nowhere i'm like you know this this really now work out and he's like all right if you don't want to do it then don't do it but you know me kind of just I, I i stuck around and i was there until i got through and as i said i got the job and it was with xerox at the time no longer xerox no and at the time they were managing the amazon account so that's the account i got through for then i started training and this is where things got even worse so i started training now all of the final say a ten thousand jamaican dollars may i get before tax so after tax it would be like eight thousand something dollar i mean i say me if i come to work every day and it was like about eight hours not eight probably like nine hours for ten thousand dollars before tax so i said this is ridiculous then i tell then i tell i said it to my person i told him like listen this 10 grand not gonna work out you know because me can't come work for 10 grand because i could be getting more and not having to do anything for it like i could be home and be getting that without coming to mobile i work for 10 grand i had to go to work from like 2 30 to 11 in the night i met to listen one night time i go home in a man i was living in cornwall courts at the time going home and they had a thing i don't know if it's a curfew or what they had or some shooting happened all of a sudden this long police with long gun and everything like remember said me i come from like a bush bush era wouldn't even have street light good and i'm coming into this era now being exposed to these things i'm not used to so of course that was the next shocker to me i'm like this now gonna work out i need to come back home and he said all right come home and this particular day i remember getting ready for work and i said this other guy we used to go to college together he was training as well and i said to him 2 30 person you know see me i think he reached out and I said you know so i'm not coming to work today though because i'm not coming back i'm leaving i'm going back to senti i must say no tash man you can't do that you try to stick it out you know money not enough now but it's gonna get better with incentive just try to stick it out i meant to you know i did it i did it i did it i did it i thought about it long and hard and then you know put on my clothes and i reached work extra late that day because i really and truly wasn't gonna show up and thankfully i did i did you know i went back and then after training i went on the production floor now okay you know you have a different phases in those things went on the production floor i met a few friends and of course we started chatting me used to go to work just to chat at the time because i mean i really go for tech calls because i mean i never got call call business so we had chat from now till 11 o'clock in the night when we need to go home and i realized some people like real and truly that make money and because i'm there talking with persons beside me instead of talking on the actual phone i wasn't making enough money so then you know my friends i met a couple friends like i said they started to show me the ropes and 
that's how I started to get the hang of it. And then I'm like, you know, we can probably go and do this a bit. Then when the money started to come in, I'm like, if I can get this and not be in the classroom, then I write lesson plans and stuff like that. Why do I need to go in the classroom? So that's when my thoughts change because I've never ever taught before, even though that's what I went to college for. That's when my thoughts change. And I said, you know, teaching is stressful sometimes. I really and truly, I did not do teaching because I had a passion for it. I I did it. And that's kind of crazy. I'm just a chat, chat, a go. So, but I did teach in real entry because my mother had started college and she was doing a business course when she got pregnant with me and she had to drop out. Couldn't go back, of course, because you know how old time people just stay back in ideas. So that's kind of why I decided to go that course and just say, you know, let me do this for her. So that's the only reason why I did it. So. I said to myself, I don't have to go in the classroom to make this money. I can make this money outside of the classroom and less stress. So I did that from 2011 to 2016 when I, when I had Jada. I did that up until that point. And I had gotten promoted to supervisor, which made things even better for me. And when we bought the house, that's what helped me to get the house as well. Because had it not been for that, I wouldn't have been eligible well, I'm with NHD in the first place. So when someone said to you, oh, don't go to no call center, cause call center, this call center, that, I'm not going to say they aren't this and they aren't that, but you can make it work. If you're ambitious enough, you can make it work. So don't bash a thing because you don't know how it works or don't bash a thing because you've never experienced it. But I'm telling you, I'm really happy I stuck it out because had I not, then I don't know where I'd have been. And then, give thanks for the same work. This I got so no way, but it's my reality. Give thanks for the same work because I was actually leaving for work one day when I met the person I'm with now. Um, and that's another story to tell another day too, but that's how we met and here we are now. But it was good chatting with you. I don't just my chat up my little business. So I don't know if I did like a wine or what. I'm not perfect or I'm no saint or I don't have this glorified life. Interrupt things up. No, because this is running, running, running. It was really good telling you guys some of these things so you can get to know me a little bit more. You can resonate with me more. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feedback. Um, let me know what videos you'd like to see more of or whatever it is just let me know in the comments below once again thank you all for watching have a wonderful weekend bye yeah, fuck me.